Hi everybody, Robert Ogilvie, Project Manager and Professional Coach. Um, so you you leaders, you business uh, founders, managers, you uh, people leaders, you social innovators, you entrepreneurs, uh, I have a question for you guys. Um, how would you say your energy levels are? Are they are they high? Are they allowing you to get everything you need done? Are they not as high as they could be? Um, some some gaps or some energy kind of management stuff needs to happen, or, or are they terrible? Is your health terrible, or is your you know are are they continually lacking? Um, so the reason I, I ask this and I think this is that um, uh, so I'm a firm believer and and. For, for your mind to be at its best, your body needs to be at its best. And there's also this quality of kind of grounding your thoughts. Um, if there's one thing that good strategists need to learn, and, and often they're learning this kind of firsthand, it's um, how to think critically kind of has this tone of, you know, I, I can't be using my brain all the time. I only have so many peak brain hours in the day. And how do I use my mind power efficiently? And then the long-term question is, you know, how, how do I do enough of what I need to generate the energy I need so I can take on my operational day and um, think strategically and critically and with agility and with enough um, uh, kind of poise and non-reactivity that I'm building trust in my team. Um, you know, you don't, I guess on the far end of that, it's not just that you want enough energy to do what you need to do, but if you think of so much of your job as a, as a team leader or, or dealing with lots of people or trying to cultivate the people around you is about building trust and enhancing them over time, not just did you do your stuff. Um, so these are some of the things I actually see managers and entrepreneurs struggling with again and again. That they they, um, I know I've mentioned this in another video as well. At this point now, um, they have these really unrealistic notions of how much they can do themselves, and I think there are personal bad habits there. I think there's also kind of some bad social beliefs. So I think some of this might be a delegation issue. They need to learn to delegate. They need to get in the habit of delegating. But I think part of it is also saying that like. Well, maybe those 60, 70 hour weeks are, are not worth it. Um, or or in, in some sense, it's not just saying that, um, that they're not worth it, but realizing the, the output you get is not this linear, you know, mythic man month kind of thing that your first hour and your 51st hour are not, you know, the, they're not the same hours. They're not both good hours, right? You're after about 30 hours a week, your your mental, the quality of your, your mental or intellectual outputs starts to drop significantly so this notion that you can just grind through your work by jamming in more hours um it quickly becomes an inefficient game to play um the the other stuff i was going to then touch on in this video is really to say i want to inquire uh with you guys about your health habits and so you know the three obvious health habits are how much sleep are you getting how frequently and and how are you exercising and what is your eating like, right? Um, these are three pillars which are really about getting your energy in order, right? And that, that might seem weird or, or odd, or people might say, like, oh, well, I'm not an athlete, so why, you know, I don't need to work out, or, or even try to justify as an age thing. I'm not, I'm not a 20-something anymore, so why is this important? Actually, just the opposite is true. Um, the other thing I'll say around this is that um, your base metabolic rate um, which is affecting your energy levels, uh, changes as you work out, right? Um, so in some sense, like if, if you don't have enough energy, part of it is saying that you're not using your body enough and your, your base metabolic rate is too low. And by doing exercise, particularly doing cardio or interval training stuff, you can get that up, um, which is help helping you generate energy throughout the day so that you can focus on the tasks you need to accomplish your stuff. Um, but but this was kind of a check-in to say, if I say energy management or, you know, getting fit or getting healthy, how many of you would resonate with that? Or uh, let's, let's reframe it in a roadblock sense, right? There are some long-term goals you want to accomplish, right? Do you have the energy now to accomplish them? And let's make this maybe more experiential. Is this the perfect way of how you're feeling and experiencing your life? No? Okay. So what would a perfect way of feeling and embodying what that perfect life is, what would that look like? And that's going to have an energy component to it. And what I mean by that is um, a way that you're feeling and a way that you're embodying that, right? Um, I think sometimes when we think about our long-term goals, particularly those of us which are very intellectualizing, have a, have a bad knack, a bad habit of thinking it's about achievement. If you think back to PERMA model, you know, uh, what is it, positivity, 
engagement, healthy relationships, meaning making, and achievement. Uh, and I think now there's even an S one on there too, so a six piece. Um, but it's almost like they go right to the A and you say, oh, great, you know, long term stuff is about achievement. And it has, <laughs> I mean, it can become pretty materialistic, right? It's like saying, I'm not, I don't have value now, but once I, once I achieve this big business or have so many, so much money in my bank account or, you know, some other kind of material achievement, like, you know, then I'll be happy. It's like, it kind of is if, you know, happiness, joy, feeling the way you want to feel will just be this kind of like, oh yeah, I'm so, like, like all they would be experiencing then like, I'm so pleased with my accomplishments. And part of it is so much, what am I feeling now? What am I doing now? What are the activities I'm engaged in? How, how do I feel my body? Uh, do I have time to, uh, to rest and recharge properly? Do I have enough? And particularly if we're dealing on the strategic end of things, do I have enough downtime to not only recoup properly, but think about what the, I guess it's the kind of inverses on your business, but think about what the business could be and where I want to change, right? Um, I know one of the guys uh, here in our business faculty, uh, one of the things he's researched is called um, the organizational trickster. And it it's not just about job crafting, but it's about, um, it's it kind of has to do with how organizations change over time and the role of a few particular change agents within the organization. So this is really interesting stuff to me because so many of the entrepreneurs I know, they, it's like they have that bug. It's like they got to start from scratch, but they got to keep, it's like they're disrupting themselves all the time, right? And that can make them a whirlwind for the manager around them to deal with but it's also part of reinvigorating your business right um anyway so i wanted to touch in with you guys and get a get a sense of if i say energy management uh, you know one does this term resonate with you guys but two what, what would you say your energy levels are like do you have the energy you need as a leader as, as an entrepreneur to do what you need to do these are important questions and um i want to see how you guys are tackling them are your are your body and mind in sync are one are both of them healthy and is one supporting the other. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd love your feedback on this. So, um, yeah, Robert Ogilvie, project manager and professional coach. Talk to you guys soon.